This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, this is the Awesome Cast, episode 369 times we've come to you to talk about technology, geekery in the Pittsburgh area. Myself, uh, Michael Sorge, video professional and podcaster here in the area. And as usual, we got we got a crew. We got a hell of a crew here. First of all, Katie Dudas is with us, sales and marketing director with The Scare House. Yes. Did I get it right? Director of Sales and Marketing. Damn Close it. enough. Damn it. I get all the words are just in the wrong order. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. What day of the week do we do the Facebook Live? That would be Friday. Friday. Hey. Hey. I've been practicing because I've been bringing you up to my my Lyft clients. Oh, nice. Because they're all getting the Scarehouse tickets. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I know, blah, 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 blah. You know. <laughs> so I'm name dropping you all over the place. Oh, yeah. I'm famous on the, the local news now. <laughs> That's right. Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I hit my trifecta. I love. I yeah. So you got all three. You got Scarehouse on all three networks, right? Correct. And I'll be. I think we're doing a Facebook Live with the Post Gazette. So I'm gonna go Ooh, for the newspaper next. There you Media go. Media Maven. There you go. There you go. And all the podcasts. You're gonna show up on Fishing Without Bait very soon as well yes. for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Talking about the Scarehouse. Very good conversation. Oh good. That's gonna be coming out this next week. Yeah, I thought it was good. Oh good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nothing. There you are. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, oh, there was something else I wanted to bring up to you. But I forget about it for right now. Uh, but anyways, with us, hey, we got a couch full as well. John Chachilla is with us, the uh, gadget guru over on a Big Bank International Esquire. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> and we we're just talking about his, you know, doppelgangers on the on the gold as well, uh, and and who who he's going to be face swapping with. Uh, no, no, that's that's Snapchat uh, for the for the iPhone X. <laughs> who who can get into his phone with his face piece? Well, it's not just who can get into my phone, but I also worry about. If it is me, will it still unlo- you know, mm-hmm. unlock? You know what I mean. The, the early days of Touch ID weren't weren't all that glamorous for some. It worked yeah. well for me. I think AJ still can't use Touch ID. <laughs> oh, I, I remember know, I don't, he has no fingerprints or something. <laughs> I remember why I wanted to tell Kat- Katie because uh, because my mom jumped into the chat room because when I'm, I get a text from my mom that she saw Katie on the on the TV. <laughs> Is, is is a special time. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, and of course, hey, he was hanging out over there on the couch too. Aaron Watson is joining us from uh, Going Deep with Aaron Watson. And we just had a great interview. It's going to be popping up in the next week on the awesome chat. How you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Uh, hey, tell everybody real quick what, uh, what your podcast is about. Sure. Uh, 250 episodes, interviews with entrepreneurs, innovators, all sorts of folks who are blazing interesting career paths, unpacking how they do it in 30 fun minutes. There you go. Go check it out. Thank you for joining us. And we're going to be talking about some awesome stuff with you. Awesome. All right. And of course, you can check everything out at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to the Awesomecast on iTunes, Citrus Spreaker, iHeartRadio, as well as uh, video versions on the uh, Facebook and the YouTube for the Awesomecast. You you disappeared. I'm not used to this monitor here. And you you disappeared underneath. I'm like, what happened? Uh, But um, uh, And also, you can uh, uh, touch base with us. Uh, The Facebook group is a great place. Awesomecast on Twitter. As well as uh, uh, you can drop us a line to awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And uh, thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com, the 405 Media dot com that are uh, uh streaming us over there uh i know uh, 405 is uh, having us on every morning at 9 a.m pacific time that's noon eastern and on the river's edge uh saturdays at 9 a.m uh eastern as well please go check them out and thank you to our patreon supporters uh matt weller at the coffee club five dollar level uh he gets uh he's a fan of the show uh that uh gets the gold content whenever i uh remember to hit record i'm going i swear i'm going to get it off the feed for this one uh but uh, a little bit of extra content a little bit more of us unapologetically geeking out about something like 
face detection um, or anything like that. And also at the dollar fan of the show level, thanks to our friend Mike Fedora, Mike Fedora Show on the Twitter as well. And uh, remember, we got a, a bunch of different levels. Um, you know, as much as we love, you know, coffee, you know, we do have our kind of slice uh, club uh, kind of level. And uh, uh, you can get the Golden State of the Show podcast if you donate at the $10 level or the $20 executive producer level. Uh, you give you a lot of feedback into the show, plus all the above. And uh, there's opportunities to get become uh, get an ex- executive producer credit on the show as well. Uh, you guys can support the show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. You guys are literally helping keep the lights on around here. So let's get into our awesome thing of the week. And uh, let's start with Katie for this one. <laughs> what do you got here? What is this? I don't know. I just see a wonderfully Ooh. Val missing um, <laughs> um, new app. And yes. And those always tend to get interesting. Uh, I got Halloween Pokemon. Wait. Dude. That's me. Uh, yeah. I got Halloween Pokemon. You're the thing oh, you're talking about, Oh, Aaron. wait, wait, that's, wait. That yeah, yeah okay. that's Aaron. Then let's start with Halloween Pokemon. <laughs> yes. I was confused. I was like, wait a minute. I looked at the wrong there. one and the camera's on you and I can't move it. So. That's fine. I win. So they're, uh, the new splash image for whenever, after you update your Pokemon game has Halloween spooky Pokemon. So it's suggesting that Generation 3 Pokemon will be running amok for Halloween time. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And there's some, I yeah, love there's this. some new ones in there. Yeah, I love the oh. splash image. It's so cool. That's cool. I have a giant moon in the background. I have definitely not opened up for a little bit. I love this artwork that they use for the splash images. Oh, gosh, yeah. Like, I kind of want to print them out. Like, I need a wide version for desktops. Oh, this would be amazing on your background. Oh, this would be a good phone background. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, save image as <laughs> all right we'll take care of that later uh no that's a that's actually a really good idea uh so are, are you are you still you're back into the pokemons i feel no out. but this might get me back into it <laughs> i need something i need something to, to, to get me at it because i i i, I fell out of it I, I i just i don't know i think i burn out on it because yeah. i'll play like it hard for a month <laughs> like hard like it is on you see the the pokemon tr- thing on my wrist like all the time you know, it's really beneficial when you're driving all around the city, uh, you know, in between those 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 rides doing lift and everything, or or if I'm 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 traveling or something like that. I have to get into it before March when I start traveling again. Oh yeah. Because I love just getting like, you know, different Pokemons in, in different areas like that. You know, I'm not Chachi that has a uh, uh, basically captured every available Pokemon. <laughs> so but uh no, absolutely. Did you see Pikachu in a witch's hat? <gasps> Go and down. now I have a reason to come back. Yep. Yep. Now uh-huh. I have a reason. He, you got you to get that one. He's adorable. Pikachu I, in a hat. I have the party hat. I have the Santa Claus one. <laughs> I have, I think there's another one. And then I have the, the normal. And I can't get rid of, I can't get rid I can't like trade any of them off. I have like a page full of Pikachus with, with different hats on. And I just can't it's get adorable. rid of them. They just, uh, you got me with that one. <laughs> and, and I agree with you. I, I go for the 30 day stint when something like this happens. And what actually caused me to drift this last time is there were so many raid battles going on and I could get to one Mm -hmm. and there would be a ton of people there. Yeah. And then it hit that like 30 day mark. And then all of a sudden people just started disappearing and there weren't enough people at the spots to to do the raids. And I'm like, yeah, I was getting my ass. I'm not running. I'm not running all over the city just to, to stand here and know I can't go in here and do anything. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, I, I had that too, cause I had a, a couple of opportunities to, to roam around downtown and find some of those raid battles and everything. And that's really the only functional way you could do it was like, like downtown kind of areas where there's a bunch of gyms yeah. and things like that. Aaron, are you, are you a Pokemoner? Uh, no. You, you look like you're like, what are we talking about? <laughs> I, I, I know the concept. I have a lot of friends who do it, but yeah. I just haven't gotten into it. I had somebody, well, did I have to talk about this, about this on the show before? Like I had somebody, um, he was a, he was a, a security uh, guy, and he talked about how he went to Detroit for Niantic's uh, Ingress, like back when like pre Pokemon, yeah. it was a pre- precursor to that, and where they had just like giant gathering in like downtown Detroit for Ingress. You know, not not definitely not as big as what they did with the Pokemon Go thing in in Chicago over the summer for like Day of Pokemon, but but still like a really cool kind of like definitely a geek fest, you know, that we'd be into. Um, so I keep forgetting I have a Pokemon stop right here at the office too. So we're just going to load up on my berries, um, <laughs> and see if there's any Pikachus with, uh, witch hats hanging out. Um, I'm, I'm back baby. Those, Cause I actually will play in the morning on the T ride dork. Cause mm-hmm. I hit all the stops along the T line and it's going <laughs> slow enough. You can hit them all. Yeah. 
Maybe um, put, get me get in a battle at one of those gyms. Uh, you can't get in a battle unless you're getting off. The it train. depends. It, no, no, it depends. There's a couple of those where if if the train's like kind of taking its time because it's rush hour, you can at least get one battle in real quick, like huh. one of the lower levels. I will. I will have to try that. But um, I haven't seen any of the new. So do we know? So the update came out what today? Oh, I haven't caught. But I don't. Has there been any? Because usually it's like then on a delay by a couple of days. Of, I don't know. I'm interested to see when this starts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the update has the splash screen, but I don't think it has the actual Pokemon yet. Like they, because they, they, they get the data in there, then they kind of turn them on as they go, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's even Halloween the music. There's Halloween music. There's Halloween music. They were looking in the data. There's Halloween music. Oh jeez. <laughs> Spooky. Oh jeez. Now you have, so, so here's an interesting thing. So now you have all these kids that are they're going out for trick or treating, <laughs> but they are probably also playing Pokemon. So mm. on on Halloween, right? You think it's probably a special event for that? I imagine it'd be a couple. I'm days. guessing. So I'm wondering if they'll do they'll unlock these, and then usually they do something where it's like double experience or double something. So I'm wondering if we'll get some other stuff mm. as well. We'll see. We'll see. So either way, we're we're all diving back into. <laughs> all right, dust off my Pokemon Go uh, armband. I guess we're rolling, rocking with that for the next month here. Usually it gets good around the holidays, so we'll see. We'll see what they got in store here with the uh, kind of 2.0 that they have this year. Aaron, since we kind of slightly uh, spoiled uh, your <laughs> yours here because I can't read my document right, uh, tell me about your awesome thing of the week. Yeah, there's an app called Shaper. Uh, someone actually shared it in my Facebook group, Connection University, and the big thing that I'm just trying to get back in touch with is serendipity, and, and really Pokemon Go feeds into that, where you oh, end absolutely. up someplace you didn't expect to go. Um, and you're you probably bumping into people that you otherwise wouldn't. You, you make you make some momentary friends with that. Yeah, it, and it it reminds me of like when you were a kid on the playground and you like made friends with whatever the kids were there playing. Yeah, and so Shaper is a similar thing where you can meet other interesting people in the city who are whether they're doing some entrepreneurial. That's kind of my uh my bowl game, but in general, um, way to meet new people serendipitously you know get coffee with them or do something new and that's uh, a big theme in the facebook group that i have and just in general something that i'm trying to inject a little bit more in my life so i want to recommend that to people okay. so it's, it's just kind of a, a match making networking service yeah awesome so what you know what 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 kind of brings this you know to the forefront as opposed to something like finding people on facebook or linkedin um because you know that that's what people were there for. Like I get people who just randomly add me on LinkedIn and I don't know where they're from or how they found me or what, what's happening. What they're trying to sell me. But <laughs> if you're mutually <laughs> selecting one another. And there are, I mean, there are people who are there for that. They want to just sell uh, their, I don't know, multi-level marketing scheme or insurance or whatever it is. But mm-hmm. there's also people who are fellow entrepreneurs who are just looking for other people to get coffee with and network with and help each other out. I'll definitely be downloading this and poking on that. So awesome! Is it like? Is it like? Is it like networking Tinder? Maybe. Yeah, that's basically it. That there you go. Now, right. now we have a context for this audience. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, so please swipe. Wait, was swipe right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swipe right on on my uh, Shaper account, please, guys. Um, I don't. I, I look the kitty for this. She's the weird social media app expert. <laughs> so. All my experience with Tinder. Yeah, all your experience. Yeah, I know all your experience with Tinder, but or Yik Yak or whatever the case may be, right? So check it out, Friendster. So that's Shaper S H A P R, no E, as you do in the Valley. Minimal vowels. Minimum vowels. <laughs> sure. It could have been just like Sherper. 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 So I have a new app named Spur. <laughs> and uh, I feel like we just turned into like a have silicon- you spurred? <laughs> have you spurred? I spur all the time. Shmer? I don't know if we're doing a Silicon Valley bit or a South Park bit at this point <laughs> because I feel like both have kind of done this and it's downloading. Um, awesome. So uh, my my awesome thing of the week. Wait, wait, wait. wait it's in my wall. I actually have a physical thing. <laughs> it's not. It's not just a digital thing. I need to make sure I cover it up so nobody steals my stuff. But uh, here, look, I got a movie pass. It's actually a card. <laughs> oh, they give you... I didn't know it no, was No, no, they give you a card. So this oh, is the cool part. So you get it. It took a while because they were like really, really behind. It took about two weeks to get this, right? Um, again, just to recap, Movie Pass is basically $10. I'm still trying not to show my entire card number on, on the <laughs> internet. But uh, uh, but anyways, but uh, 
it's it's uh, ten dollars a month, and you can use it with most. I think they said about ninety five percent of the theaters uh, to see basically as many movies in the theater as you would like. Uh, it, it's pretty interesting because yeah, they give you a physical card, and even it says on the card right here, uh, only valid valid at movie pass theaters. This is a Mastercard, guys. It's it's a straight up just Mastercard. And the pro the thing is though, this is not activated until uh what. <laughs> It's right over there. I see exactly where I'm at. I'm going over here to you guys. You know, <laughs> look at this card over here. Not you guys. You're getting the covered version. Um, <laughs> I, I watched Leo Laporte give his personal information out too many times on uh, on the Twit Network to know. Was that? Oh no. Well, at least it's not my real credit card. So, um, so everybody's out there freeze framing. But it, but it doesn't matter. Because I, uh, it doesn't work until I pull up the app and check in, and it, tell, it ch checks by my GPS that I'm at the theater, and then it allows the process to go through on the card. So I have to go in, bring up the movie I want to see. I'm there at like AMC Lowe's. We went to a couple times this week. I uh, say, hey, I want to go see Kingsman. Hit the check in button. It's like, hey, you're all set. You go through the kiosk. Or however you want to get your, you know, I, I just, you know, as much as I don't want to talk to people, um, you get it. Yeah, you, uh, plug in your AMC stubs. It thinks you just bought a ten dollar movie, anyways. So I'm getting the points for that because I can't tell it for the mm -hmm. most part. It's just a card transaction. We saw um, Kingsman and American Made. Both movies kind of on their way out, so they were like in that back hallway back there. But still, um, we have a really funky schedule. So it's actually really kind of awesome to go see a movie on a Wednesday or Sunday night when nobody else is at the theater. Um, also unsettling when a guy comes in like halfway through your mm -hmm. Tom Cruise movie and is just eating all of his candy, uh, <laughs> be, like two seats behind you. But other than that, uh, but it, it's it, it's it's pretty cool. And even like the first one was the first movie was like nine ninety nine because we didn't care about what time of day we went, mm -hmm. right? So now you've loosened up to it. Um, you know, if you do like a, a Cinemark movie, you can go in, get your, you know, we have the assigned seating at the Cinemark. You can still do the assigned seating thing there. Um, you can't do, unless there's, I think I think you can do IMAX. I, I saw some IMAX listed on the, on the app uh, movies, but you can't like upgrade to the luxury seating at AMC. You can't do the 3D glasses versions of, of movies a lot of times, a lot of that upsell stuff. Uh, but generally, it's it's pretty cool. This is I, I love the idea of this because, you know, I was thinking back to um, when I got Netflix. And I, well, I, was the, I was the one that we went to Walmart on shopping trips and I'd come back with a $5 DVD. It's like half my collection is just like random mm -hmm. stuff I'd pick up because like, oh, I haven't seen this movie or that's nice to, nice to own on DVD or something, right? And then when I got Netflix, that stopped. Right, um, you know Google Music. I pay ten, ten bucks a month for music. I don't buy albums on iTunes anymore. Now I'm not concerned with movies because I know how much I'm spending on movies every month. So now, like, it's kind of frees your, I guess, entertainment budget a little bit, and so you're not like worried about do I really have money to go see a movie? Um, and it's just kind of interesting how that kind of changes your, your perception. I need to hide that card. That's an actual card there. So, um, but anyways, uh, so it's movie pass It's $10 a month. It works pretty good. Sometimes the app gets a little weird. Um, we had trouble checking Missy into the movie Sunday night, um, for hers. And, and then that's the other thing. Each one of us has to pay for a movie pass in order to use this. And we both have to individually go buy the ticket right on our card. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt if, for a couple to do mm -hmm. that and also we haven't done something that is assigned seating like a cinemark to see if that works and we get messed up on our seating um but generally i highly recommend it if you're a movie goer or want to be a movie goer a little bit more um so and even i think you can download the app and kind of poke around to it the app is not great it doesn't even have movie posters for half of the stuff like it's just not loading in so hopefully that gets better as as, as time goes here um, but definitely highly, highly recommend it. I think that's moviepass.com if you want to check it out. Well, and, and I like what you said. We've been to the movies a couple times this week. This week. <laughs> this week. This week. And and for me, and people are like, well, why don't you just go home and watch TV? It was like, well, for me, I can't, I have to go to a movie to block out. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just how my life is right now. The phone goes off. I'm paying attention to one thing. And it's like the only time in my life right now where I can focus on one thing and I love movies, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in video, like, you know, it's just, I love, I love the storytelling. I love, you know, checking those things out. I love the atmosphere of a theater. 
you know, especially a nice big theater like Lowe's is uh, at the waterfront. So that is my kind of built-in release. That doesn't have to do with anything business. And the, my watch isn't buzzing for anything because I turned my phone off and, you know, I can go away for two hours. So it's a really nice fit for us. I'm waiting for the day that you come in and you're like, I saw three movies yesterday. I was there till two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I have movie hangover. Chilly. chilly <laughs> ch- yeah, chilly. Uh, chill out, chill out. When the hell am I going to have an entire day to do that? <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> That's the other question. Although really nice when I'm traveling, because sometimes I'm like, I don't know what to do, or this is a small town where there's nothing to do, which is kind of more often than not where I end up. Um, it's really nice to just kind of go see where's the where's the nearest theater where's the nearest like, and, and you know it's kind of nice because like these like pittsburgh kansas it's like uh the the, the high-end movie is seven dollars <laughs> you know <laughs> and, you know i I, spent, I paid seven dollars for a 3d movie to see pirates last june wow yeah. yeah the other sudden is that uh they the way their system works mm-hmm. you can only see one movie a day with the pass oh that's right oh, that okay. is right i forgot about that, that that's why i'm chiming now, in now it's like 12 1 a.m a different day I guess Probably. technically it would be. So, like, if you went to like an, an ev- late evening release and then the midnight showing of something, there you go. But you got to make sure it's like after that midnight that you yeah. checked in. Well, usually, Does it count? Is are we counting West Coast because that's where the office is? Because I've had yeah. I've had that problem with Uber where you know where's my rollover and it's three a.m. because they're based in the San Francisco area, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, depends so but no yeah no it's definitely definitely really cool we'll see how long it lasts but (laughs) for now it's a really good idea and a really cool system so definitely uh chilla what is your awesome thing of the week my awesome thing of the week isn't actually an app called file browser it's an ios app so one of the things that while i do have a lot of space on my devices i mean like i'm 128 gig devices i don't put all my movies on there i don't put like I have a lot of content on my home storage arrays. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you do on your Drobo and everything else. Not enough. Never Not, enough. Yeah, never exactly. <laughs> never never enough. enough. It's spread across multiple multi terabyte drives. Um, one of the things that I was looking for, and I've actually used there's a, there's another app that's kind of like this one called File Explorer. Um, this app kind of takes all of your cloud based content as well as your local storage and puts it into one application. What I thought was cool about this is it also has the new iOS 11 files integration. Mm -hmm. So you can literally be in iOS files, open this up, drag and drop stuff off your network storage array onto the device, drag stuff on the device off to your network storage array. Oh, and by the way, this will also turn your device into um, a little web server. So if you're on a Wi-Fi network, you can actually drag f- files and let people map to your to your iPad as almost like a little file server and then copy files back and forth that way. Um, so a nice little utility to have in the utility belt when you're when you're out and about and either need to copy files. It does have some built in integration for things like uh, annotating PDFs, which I thought was pretty nice. Um, but mainly for me, it's being able to either spin up a server and share files or read files off the same off of other devices on the same Wi-Fi network I'm on. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. I'm always weary on solutions like this over the years, like your file browser sync kind of situation. I've had a few of them. Particularly, I remember the one that was like a file sharing application, but also happened to have a Super Nintendo emulator built in somehow. <laughs> uh, there's that one. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I always worry. And maybe this is different now because of the day and age and how open uh, iPads and iOS is. Um I, I'm worried that it's going to be weird and proprietary and not work all the time. I've had I've had good luck with File Explorer, and I just grabbed this yesterday, and I'm mm. happy with it so far. The one thing I actually want to test it with, too, is they, they state it works and integrates well with portable Wi-Fi drives, and I actually have a one terabyte portable Wi-Fi drive. Um, so I actually, that's, that's kind of the next test that I want to do because mm. then I can pretty much take my entire music and movie library with me on the go and use this as kind of an easy way. Where are you taking content. your entire library? I don't know. Are you, so here's, so here's a random, uh, insight into my life or into my mind. Uh Oh, here we go. I have an irrational fear of data loss when I'm not at home. So 
like there's a drive that I carry around with me that I sync at home. So if something happens to the house or the network at the house or something, I have like all the family photos in my photo archive, all my movies and all my music on that one ter all my favorite movies on that one terabyte drive. And it, I constantly sync it back and forth at home. So I have always have two copies and those two copies are never in the same location other than when I'm at home sleeping or at home in random. And I, if something happened, I would grab my bag on the way out the house. Again, this is one of those where I wish I didn't deal with giant video files that mm -hmm. I could do things like this. Like you just two Drobos. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just like all the time. Like wait, what's in the suitcase? Oh, <laughs> don't you want to know? It's my data robotic devices. What's up? Um, but, <laughs> but you kind of need to with the, with the stuff that I'm mm -hmm. dealing with here. And you can, you do off site storage, don't you? Yeah. We have stuff up in back blaze, but you know, I had a drive fail and it was just like, all right, it's a uh, fine 200 bucks to get a drive, you know, to get all that stuff off. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I have a massive fail, it's going to be prohibitively expensive to get, you know, gigs and gigs of things. So now I'm looking actually at things like, um, you know, it was brought up to me. Uh, there's an Amazon archival storage that may be more suitable for large files. Um, so I have to look at kind of the cost benefit of that, but I am also only paying five bucks a month for Backblaze and I am using the hell out of that thing. So, uh, we'll, and if, we'll if Backblaze does web dev or depending on what it's, how you can connect to it, you might even be able to use this app to just map directly to it. I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps. Oh, sorry, my something got unplugged over here. Um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> people are waving to us outside and doing uh, uh, Hulk Hogan poses. Uh, but anyways, this is uh, this is what it's like here in Beachview, and uh, and uh, it's a really good community, and we love that one of those in the community is supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. So a shout out to our friends Slice on Broadway here, right up the Broadway, the original location. Uh, here in Beachview, uh, right along the tracks, as well as their other locations down at Carnegie, PA, on Main Street, PNC Park, home of the, PN home of the yeah, Pittsburgh Pirates. Oh, there's too many P's in my promo. Uh, and the <laughs> brand new location, Riz was there. Our friend from the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the Riz, was uh, uh, checking out the new location in East Liberty, right in the heart of everything going on out there. Uh, right, right down the road from Google, I believe, as well. So I uh, hope the Googlers are getting some slice on Broadway. But also the big news, uh, we've been uh, really big on um, um, throwing out there and supporting our friends because over at the Incline, uh, there has been a massive, hotly marinara uh, sweating contestant uh, contest going on of the uh, uh, best pizza Incline uh, Ultimate Pizza, Pittsburgh Pizza Brackets. And we are down to the Elite Eight. Slice on Broadway is taking on the Dastardly Minio's Pizza House. <laughs> Which I think a lot of people swear by. So I'm really interested to see how this turns out. But please go support our friends. Slice on Broadway over at the Incline.com's Ultimate Pizza uh pittsburgh pizza uh, uh bracket uh support them and no i don't want to change my color scheme go away windows um but, <laughs> but no uh it, so it's it's good to see all that support and i did get something i don't know uh, if you're a part of the vip text club with slice on broadway i believe if you do show that you voted and you send them an image of that uh i forget how they worded it but you'll get 20 percent off this week of your order Keep Wait, fun. you get 20 How do you do this? Hold on. I got to see. Prove that you voted? Yeah, you got to prove that you voted. Prove uh, that you voted and then what? But first, you got to be part of that VIP club. Go sign up for I'm the I'm part VIP. of the VIP club. You think she should have gotten a text message then. I didn't. Text your check. I think it was a text message. I know I got a message. Now I'm not sure where I got it because I can't find it. I I'll, see, I'll go through my yeah, emails. Okay, it trash, might be my email. I see that trash is getting picked up tonight, so there's that. <laughs> um, but uh, I know it popped up, and I almost wrecked the car when it popped up. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, so go check, check them out and support them. Pittsburgh, slice on Broadway, uh, dot com, all over Pittsburgh. Wow. Uh, you, I know Riz is like super happy that they're over there. So. And by the way, thank you. Um, this is a thing that's come up with Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, there was a thing that that that, that people are saying um, um, when we're doing our promos that that uh, you know uh, uh, kick the door down and tell them Mayhem sent you. 
Um, think I appreciate Dave Podner out there. I believe he listens to both shows. Send us a picture of him um, attempting to kick down the door for Slice mm-hmm. on Broadway when they weren't open yet last week. Um, so PSA, please don't actually kick the door down, especially since it pulls out. Uh, that's not going to help either. Uh, so please gently open the door, maybe with zest, and then you can tell Awesome Cast sent you. But please do not do damage to our sponsors and support them when you're uh, attempting to support them. Uh, thank you very much to those. Those fans are just uh, great out there, and I love that they're they're getting into this. Hey, speaking of Pittsburgh and and, and Google, uh, uh, Chilla, have you seen the uh, the Google announcements that? happened right here in pittsburgh last last week there was something about funding there's a lot of funny there's a lot about grant work and everything uh but no they made the announcements right here in pittsburgh and the they, ceo it was the ceo uh, uh, oh great sundar sundar pachai i listen to it all day, all day on other podcasts and i never get the chance to say it so um i'm out of practice but no featured featured three businesses and everything like that so, so you, you were paying attention to this right right aaron yeah, they launched a platform. Uh, what they're trying to do is just create more ways for people to access opportunity. You don't have to go to school. You can get certifications with their AdWords program, with other digital marketing things to make that a more marketable skill for you to potentially get work. Mm-hmm. They're investing uh, some significant grants locally in Pittsburgh to support um, the nonprofit scene, which already is, you know, fl- I, I think, flourishing here in Pittsburgh. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, just in general, I mean, they're they're really pushing back against the kind of evil corporate tech overlord um, narrative that's being pushed by some of the larger media outlets. So kind of returning a little bit to that, uh, that, that don't be evil kind of thing a little bit, right? Like kind of reinforcing that. I know yeah. they don't pub- I, I think it's not officially publicly their stance anymore um, as a mission, but I, I mean, it's still, you know, it, it's still kind of, in, Even the retraction the, of that as a motto is kind of a statement in and of itself. Yeah, it is a little bit like <laughs> eh, that's actually not our motto. That, that's like, like actually, <laughs> well, I mean, evil's okay some of the time, you know. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's interesting. Are you making friends out there? Yeah, we're yeah. waving. You're waving at people. Oh yeah, we got some kids hanging out. That's awesome. We got we need to throw a camera out there for these guys. Yeah. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> uh but uh no no it's really cool to see uh you know not just obviously you know i think everybody kind of oh hey google's in pittsburgh and there's that big may bakery square building that they they're a part of over there too so um no it's really cool to see see that it's really cool to see that uh going on and seeing a lot of activity around that too i think the kids are breaking in so (laughs) uh so happening live live podcasting on facebook is anything can happen here um but uh so hey guys we're podcasting how you doing (laughs) uh but (laughs) anyways uh no no really cool to see those kinds of things happening for sure (laughs) missy's missy's now wrangler (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so um also uh this was a uh, one that uh, our friend amanda narcissi of bold pittsburgh brought up here uh in our, our uh, contributed uh, uh uh part of the show uh the rocket book it is the um world's first intelligent reusable notebook uh, uh missy i imagine you probably dived into this one since you're the ready one here on the show no, you didn't. <laughs> my, my, my friend at work has one of these. Oh, yeah. He has the wave, mm-hmm. the one that you can put in the microwave. <laughs> Wait, what? So, so yeah. So the, his, his, you literally write in the notebook. I think you do have to use their, their pens. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're done with the book, you put it in the microwave mm-hmm. and all the pages wipe clean. Whoa. Whoa. And then you start using it again. So we had we had an AI day at work, and um, uh, I don't know if they were help sponsor AI day. That. Was that the the IBM Watson thing? They did. IBM was there. The IBM was there. Uber was there. Mm-hmm. There was a number of companies there. I think it was on the news. Is that where all these IBM stickers came from? Um. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um. So yeah. So one of the the door prizes or whatnot was one of these the, the Rocket Book Wave, and the the, tr- the the cool part of it is you can. It works the same way as the normal rocket book ever last um, where you can kind of take pictures of the take pictures of all the pages. It loads them up into their their cloud resource um, and, and syncs to any of your your cloud source of choice, whether it be OneNote, Evernote, Box, whatever. But the wave when you're done with when you filled the book, you throw it in the microwave 
I don't know. I don't know. I how can't long, get over that. Yeah. I don't know how long you microwave it for, um, but it wipes all the pages clean. Wow. Uh, I love. I love when you're looking at the tabs on the website. There's like you know description specs and why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, that's it's awesome to see a reusable one like that because I mean I know you know the the notebook uh, uh, dedicated ones in my life like end up with notebooks upon notebooks upon notebooks upon notebooks right and that that, that becomes I mean really kind of a clutter problem in the long run too. Um, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Okay, I'm just saying it's a thing that happens. There are lots of notebooks in the house. That's all I'm saying. And and now I'm just going to be throwing them in the microwave because this is what I learned from this podcast. Um, but <laughs> no, you can check that out. It's at uh, getrocketbook.com and uh, the other righty one, uh, Amanda Narcissi uh, over at Bold Pittsburgh uh, as well can uh, uh, is is probably going to get into that as well. Chili, did you see the Rocket Book color? I I did not I I now I did because I went out to the website that was the link in the doc. It's like mm-hmm. a coloring book, like where you can have kids draw using different Crayola products, and then uh, the screen wipes clean so you can reuse the pages. But you'll get them digitally, so then you won't have all these kids' drawings run, oh, running around great. just like again, as paper. just like all over the place. But and and if you want it on the fridge, you can just. Uh, you can just print it out, right? <laughs> or put it on your smart fridge. <laughs> oh, Future. there you go. But Chilla has a smart fridge. We Carla wants one, but we. They're really expensive. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. Really, that's that's for the Samsung really world, right? Really <laughs> well, I'm worried. I'm worried too. Christopher, at his age, is he gonna like reach up to hit something and hit the screen with his yeah. hand and order pizza we, from we, Grubhub? We, <laughs> order pizza yes. from Grubhub. We've we've talked about it, and we've actually said, you know, versus doing that, why don't we just take one of the old iPads and just mount it mm-hmm. up on the fridge with a wire? kind of running behind then this, you kind of know what you're getting right rather so. rather invisible yeah so so we've 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 thought about it but it's not nearly as nice as the smart fridge where you have it's like a 24 inch mm. widescreen we on were side and wi-fi and cameras in your fridge so when you're away and you want to oh what do i need at the store yeah yeah that or cool that stuff. detects things and kind of orders them for you on amazon yeah. or whatever yeah we had our time uh uh, at the Samsung store up in New York City, trying to see if we could get Grubhub to order to the store uh, f- through the account there. So, but I mean, it's it's very like they're nice, but it's still very like kludgy Amazon or I'm not Amazon uh, Android. You know, like it's not great. You know, yeah. they're just like, oh, this feels like an Amazon or geez, I keep doing that Android device. Um, the, for for the price of these though, for the for the different Rocket Books, the Everlast is thirty four. It wipes clean with water. The microwave one's twenty seven bucks. Um, you do have to use their pens, but like it comes with one, and then the three pack is what seven bucks. Mm-hmm. These these making a very very nice Christmas present. Yeah, they would. They, uh, hint 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 hint. We have to send this clip to your wife. Hint hint. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I I completely forgot about this, but this is completely my like this should have been my other awesome thing of the week or or, or something. Uh, timing. But um, I've been, I think I've talked about on here, I've been a big fan of Disney movies anywhere. And I think some of you may begin Disney movies and you've been seeing that too. Basically the idea, you get the movie and it's automatically available on your uh, uh, iTunes, your, so your Apple TV, your Amazon account, your Google account, Vudu. Um, and, and that's been a really cool concept, but it's been like, oh great, I have all my Star Wars and my, my Pixar movies and my Marvel movies. But that's it. And what about, you know, X-Men and other things? Because that's basically all I buy is comic book movies, admittedly, right? Um, So it was announced this week. And I remember just last week, like, man, I really hope people just kind of come around and maybe they just expand it out. But, man, that's never going to happen because it's a Disney studio thing, right? My dream, somebody, I, I apparently prayed to the gods of digital media because announced last week was Movies Anywhere which has most of the major movie uh, studios, Lionsgate and Universal, uh, not Universal, Paramount, are still in talks for this. But man, most of my movies are in one place. I was able to go on my Apple TV and I said I have 67 movies when I hook this thing up. Uh, again, you bring in your Disney Anywhere account, you sync it with your 
Google Play, your Amazon, your iTunes, your Vudu account, and it brings in every movie available to you. Today, I just got in because I'm the crazy person who always gets a physical copy, even though I'm completely just going to watch it digitally, right? I get that Blu-ray copy of Spider-Man Homecoming, as I do, which, again, is a, is a Sony movie, not a Marvel movie, regardless of their ties to the Marvel Universe. Uh, and so I'm like, well, I'm going to have to deal with the ultraviolet and eh, maybe I'll get to being able to bring in on Flixer, which started discontinuing or Fandango now, which is like, come on or voodoo. Oh God, I guess so. Uh, but now I took that ultraviolet code. I brought up my movies anywhere. I put it in the movies anywhere and it took the code and I have it everywhere. That's amazing. It's amazing. Now, now cause I think, I, I don't know if you saw it first in the Slack when I put it in there, cause I mm-hmm. think that's where I put it. Did you get the, the free movies? I believe I did get the free so, movies. So, and I don't know if they're still doing that, but if you signed up, if you linked one service to music or to movies anywhere, I think you got one movie free. And then if you did two, you got like an, or you, maybe you got two movies free and then you got an additional three, three or four sad. movies. I was for sad because I already completely own Big Hero 6, but it was like the, the latest Jason Bourne movie. I think Ghostbusters was in, the latest mm-hmm. Ghostbusters was in, in, in that, which is one of like I've been thinking about grabbing. Um, it, it, there was a couple more in there too. So, but it, it's, you know, if if you've been on some of these services, like I have like a random movies I have in uh, Google Play. You know, I have like a copy of Elf and the original X Men movie and Transformers, right? And well, Transformers isn't over yet because of Paramount, but you know that is now folding in. You know, it's like when the movies anywhere thing happened. Now, like all it, it pulled in like a random Paramount Marvel movie I had. You know, and now it's on my iTunes, but I had it over on Amazon before. But it saw that and brought them over because it 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 brought all those in under the Marvel banner. Um, this is doing a similar thing. You forget what movie you randomly had on random Google Play that you never use, mm-hmm. or or whatever that service is, right? And you and you bring it in. There's a I had a copy of Office Space that I think I acquired through Target when they had their <laughs> short-lived service. And whenever I brought it up on other services that said this isn't available anymore, I got it. It did it. It mm-hmm. played. It's fine. It's still SD, but that's okay. You know, <laughs> things that I took, like, did the uh, uh, five free uh, verify your DVD and we'll give you an ultraviolet version of it. They're there. So I have all, I have the two good Ninja Turtle movies in my system. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as you do. Um, you know, so it, it's really good. And I love that it is backward compatible that like you can still grab random voodoo and ultraviolet movies that are still going to be out there in a while for a while. Mm-hmm. Right. And these codes will still work. What, what, um, what this has done for me is I was locked in to Apple TVs all over the house. Oh no. And this has definitely opened up the concept to maybe I'll get, like the NVIDIA Android TV for upstairs, or maybe I'll get some uh, a Roku, or maybe I'll like now it's really made me think about diversifying the players around the house because I'm no longer locked in mm-hmm. to the Apple ecosystem. And it's so nice because um, they're starting to include all of the um, features. Like, uh, you know, I classically have not had a Blu ray player until like I bought an Xbox One like months ago. And now I'm like, oh, I can see those extra features that I haven't been able to because I have the disc and I've never been able to use it, right? Um, and uh, they're they're all there. They're all on basically every platform. There's an extras, and you can go watch them. What, what I'm interested too, and in, for the Xbox One is because um, does this does this have an Xbox One app or does it work with Xbox One? At I all? don't know. But if you have Amazon on there, if That's you true. have Voodoo on yeah, there, because I'm interested too, because when iTunes goes to the at uh, the new Microsoft Universal mm-hmm. thing, and they put it in the App Store here coming soon. I'm guessing in the next month or two, mm-hmm. will we get an iTunes app on the Xbox One? Yeah, yeah. Hey, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it seems like they're they're loosening everything else out. So, um, what we talked about on the show. It was definitely over a year ago. There was the announcement. There was the challenge. And it's finally going to happen. Giant robots are going to freaking battle, guys. Yes. Yeah, that's USA. today. Is it today? Oh, it's today, like right now, actually. Yeah, I don't know when. It, is, that, is that right <laughs> now, right now? I think it is, hold on, 10 p.m. Eastern time. So we may have to delay the Wrestling Mayhem show for the best reason ever. <laughs> this is kind of a wrestling thing. It, it, it kind of counts. Yes, it does kind of count. So, yeah, uh, it, it's uh, you see a picture there if you're on, with us on the video. These are about 15-foot tall robots. Um, there's definitely some very, they look like they're straight out of, if anybody's played Neck Warrior, 
or anything else, Battle BattleTech or anything like that. Um, and uh, of course, if you're big fans of Pacific Rim, by the way, the, yeah, the that's new- what I was gonna say. Is this how we get eventually get like major robot guardians oh, of our it, planet? It, it's completely happening. It's Megabots versus Sudabashi. It's years in the making. It's going to be on Twitch at 10 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Two nights, super heavyweight title match, giant robot duel. It's going down. It is America versus Japan. It is who can make the best giant robots, and uh, and it's going to be great. Here's a little. Where demo. is the actual battle taking place? The battle is I don't know on the internet. Uh, <laughs> you know, on the internet. I mean, yeah. you know, do they do? Is this is this going to be like on a on a um. Uh, uh, you know, a, a a a common common ground. Are we going to do this in Europe or something like that? Um, it is. Let me see if it's got it on here. No, it actually doesn't. It's just like, hey, this is going to happen, and it's going to be online. So, so there you go. Um, no, no, it's. I'm, I'm really. I, I think we might have to delay the show tonight a little bit. Um, to watch giant robots fight. I really hope this just doesn't. I I I have this worry that it's going to turn into that like main event boxing match that goes down in two seconds. Mm. You know, like there's some kind of mechanical favor failure after all this time, and it goes down. Also, one of them it looks like it has a chainsaw, so I'm a little worried about the safety of the guy inside. But you know, there's got to be some some pretty nifty rules. Is there someone that. inside or is it remote? No, no, they're definitely they're inside. inside. Oh. Like these, these are piloted vehicles Damn. over here. So, right. Just as a point of clarification, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing some research over here and the battle has already apparently taken place. They're what? just streaming oh, it. What? Boo. what? Tape delay? This is as bad as the Olympics. Was NBC <laughs> running this crap? <laughs> Spoiler alert, Megabots blue screened well, and crashed can... and burned. <laughs> Yeah, I no, can, spoilers, no spoilers. No spoilers. I know what's going on. That there. isn't true. I, I can tell but, you, someone from like former legal profession background. Yeah, somebody was probably their lawyers were involved, saying we don't want to put this live yeah, just in case. <laughs> just um, in case somebody blows up and dies, and yeah, I can see. You know, I, I work with the the college design series for SAE. I'm ho- and they do Baja, they do Formula, they do Aero Design. And, you know, that's a lot of stuff that we work with. Snowmobiles. Uh, I think they might have an AI division coming up. I'm waiting for them to do the giant robot division of uh, cds for the society of automotive engineers <laughs> that's gonna be amazing i'm gonna i'm gonna bring it up at the next meeting um if they're not already watching this podcast. all right here's I, i'm like so I've, I've got this article from the verge pulled up over here mm-hmm. so hey, um, we got we got a nice shot of your shoulder the fun, the fun thing <laughs> is if you're expecting something like pacific rim on smaller scale or battle bots on a bigger one you may be a tad disappointed uh they're both big bots, 16 and 13 feet tall, respectively. It's going to be like slow moving. But they're pretty it's, slow and have limited mobility. Yeah, yeah. As robo-fights go, this is more likely to be a little like rock'em sock'em <laughs> versus <laughs> what, what we're anticipating. Yeah, but rock'em sock'em just usually goes until someone gets frustrated and shoves it off the table. So, <laughs> well, so since it's pre-recorded, they can play it at four speed. Like quadruple Ooh, yeah, the speed. There you and, go. And... There you go. Absolutely. So Awesome. So giant robots, it apparently already happened. We are living in the future. Okay, yeah. I, I just now got to the part of the article where it talked about it. So it won't be a live event. Uh, mm-hmm. In a press release, Megabots Inc. said that the duel consisted of multiple rounds of fighting and that in order to give the team time to repair their bots, the rounds were spread out over several days. There's this no ma- repairs this in ma- battle The bots? fight could not be live streamed like a traditional sport. And it was held in, a, in an abandoned steel mill in Japan. That's the answer we were looking for. Because where else would you do this but an abandoned steel mill? Hey, Hey, uh, uh, future robot fighting leagues. We have a lot of abandoned steel mills here in the yes. Pittsburgh area. I'm just saying. And plus CMU, and it's kind of a center of innovation. And man, uh, and if things go and things go bad with uh, with the, uh, the the robots, um, and they catch on fire, We've we are right by system. three. Yeah, there's. Don't get me started on the healthcare system. <laughs> uh, there's. <laughs> But there's rivers. There's plenty of rivers for you to dump them into the the, the put out the fire. Well, what, uh, I, what I want is the gambling lines. Like I want live gambling as the rounds going <laughs> on, and that my, oh, so that happens at the rivers, the game. right? Yeah, we've got it. Like. That's what we need. Now that I know that it's already happened, I, I can't really enjoy it in the same way. Hey, you know what? They're still betting on pro wrestling. Yeah. Like we go like like when we get to WrestleMania, we have, like somebody brings up the Vegas odds. I'm like, guys, yeah. it's pro wrestling. Yeah. It, <laughs> but I'd be like so fired up to research like the guy doing the repairs, like see what he's got under the hood and 
I don't know. That would be that'd be a lot of fun. Are you bringing in people from like NASCAR? Yeah. Is it like mm-hmm. you know is fixing it? it? Yeah, like yeah. Getting in there beforehand. Speed fixers. Yeah. Speed speed mechanics. Yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. There's a whole new there's a whole new world. If you it's know, in this... Pittsburgh, they should name one of the robots Sorgatron. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only. If only. <laughs> Jeez. Um, hey, that's how that started. The, the Sorgatron 5000, they kept calling me every time they came into the studio with all my disarrayed wires and everything like that. Hey, let's bring this back around. Katie? Hi. There's an article in here for you. Oh, I have an article? <laughs> I, I, I put it, I put it there. Pornhub, uh, once again, the purveyors of future technology yes. are once again pushing things forward. Have you Have you looked into this? Yes. Um, it's, I like the, the idea of this AI being able to identify so many components of videos mm-hmm. because I think that will also help fu- in the future of other videos that aren't porn related. We're, we're not busy with giant robots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're checking out porn to decide what everything's happening in each scene. Yes. But no, I know, I think it's really cool that they're able to do this because then this will be able to help. Um, well, one, it'll help with us trying to figure out when somebody takes one of our videos in the future. Mm hmm. Because that's a, an issue we kind of run into on occasion. Very specifically, it's talking about they're trying to categorize Pornhub. <laughs> and they're doing it with, with uh, AI and machine learning uh, to catalog and tag every mm-hmm. clip in Pornhub's vast, uh, vast uh, library. Because I don't know if you've been on Pornhub lately. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mess. When it's we're not on Tinder. Mess. When we're not on Tinder, we're all... <laughs> we're just like, you know, the, the awesome cast Slack is just like, did you see this crazy thing on Pornhub? Um, which it kind of is, actually. It when keeps... you th- it, it is. Uh, but, you know, uh, but no, like, you know, something like that, it, you know, community kind of a generated thing, like the tags are a mess and and it's it gets it gets ugly. You know, I mean, we've seen like missed tag things on YouTube, right? Yes. Um, all the time. And imagine that um, in this space a little bit. So uh, they're they're trying to clean up their act there, and also uh, like I've saw other kind of uh, side articles about how this might be a problem because now they're going to identify all those like you know again copy protection and everything like that, mm-hmm. uh, which I think that kind of runs wild on porn sites like this yes. that are kind of submitted. Um, and then yeah, you know, like I said, and we already have content match on YouTube, but you have to be part of the system in order to do that. But if it turns into something a little little more robust. That could be interesting. Well, here's here's my big question with it. Mm-hmm. Um, porn stars usually go under stage names. Mm-hmm. So how close is it going to be to determine that, oh, hey, this is my daughter or my niece or that whoever. That is one of the concerns going into this because now we're going to identify, you know, people that maybe are just doing this. Uh, the, you know, the, 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 college, the college people, they're just trying then to get through. Then they have to wear masks. They have to wear masks. They can't identify people in masks. Well, 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 that's what the... There's other... Oh, really? Yeah. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's yeah, it's only going to identify like the major players, not the amateur folks. And and not, and not, 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 not tattoos and birthmarks or other parts. No. <laughs> <laughs> Until the AI becomes self-aware. Yeah, then, then it'll... It, what, where I'm interested in this is if... if um, like Netflix could use this to help catalog and tag all the major movies. So I could say, I want to see sci-fi movies that don't have clowns, that <laughs> have <laughs> at least five minutes of blood splatter with, you know what I mean? Like to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, Vin Diesel. Without Vin Diesel. Yeah. Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> and preferably Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yes. Like it, that's where I would, I would think to me it would, it'll bring in that, Hey, I want to see this. Mm-hmm. I could I, I could verbally speak to it almost like a digital assistant, and it could start to trim down yeah. large amounts of movie selection. Because well, we really only have search in, in terms of text. We don't have really search and, and for s- audio or video. Right. That's, right. that's really specific. And so and something like that, you know, again, that's the problem with, with Pornhub is okay maybe there's some other problems with Pornhub but it is you know it, it's that whatever somebody thought that video was or the reason to watch that video you know but if you have like a machine saying no watch this video because of no clown sci-fi five minutes of blood splatter which is a really weird porn <laughs> uh, if we're crossing over here but 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 still like that idea and no Vin Diesel. I want and X no Vin y and Z. I don't want to get I don't I don't want to get deep with the 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 with the classical movie soundtrack <laughs> the classical, classical movie music soundtrack. I mean again all things that can act that can completely apply to Pornhub in the long run um but but still no um but no it's that's definitely something that could 
you know, we, we struggle this as content makers too, because I know, okay, we've, we've dealt with like the text, right. Mm -hmm. And, and having to uh, not translate, but, um, uh, um, transcribe, uh, you know, shows like this or what you're doing for Scarehouse. So, so it becomes more searchable, you know, um, and, and if you can actually tag that visual element and you have that like object identification in video, um, it's going to be hilarious until, cause we've seen like, those VR, AR, AI things like around the Google Glass, right? Mm -hmm. When remember like lamp looks like baseball bat, you know, things like that. Uh, so there's definitely going to be that little rough spot. And I just thought of how that applies to Pornhub. Uh, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, but <laughs> why Why are all these grapefruits? Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's uh, once again, you know, uh, uh, porn industry is, is, is using, and Pornhub, how, Pornhub is like the leader in technology it seems in this space and it's really interesting to see and uh, where that can go from there. So yeah, a little bit, it, it, this got weirdly controversial when they were doing a lot of stories around this as well. So, all right guys, it's been awesome to chat with you guys about technology and such. Uh, Aaron Watson, he's uh, going deep with Aaron Watson on all your podcast providers and you got a lot of other cool stuff coming up too. Yeah, I have an event called the Going Deep Summit. It's going to be January 27th at the Kelly Strayhorn Theater here in Pittsburgh. Uh, it is going to be a day with a bunch of innovative social entrepreneurs and other folks that um, just descending at the Kelly Strayhorn Theater are super ambitious. And anyone who wants $15 off our ticket can use the code SWORD to do so. SORG to do so. There you go. Thank you very much. I am now a discount code. <laughs> this is a new experience for me. You've made it. <laughs> Yes, when you are when you save people money just by the speaking of your name on the internet. Um, thank you so much, Aaron Watson. Check out his podcast. A lot of great, and I love. And, and we were talking about on the interview. It, it's two hundred fifty plus interviews that you've done over the years, and he, there's a great getting started page where he categorizes the top episodes under different categories like technology, banking, uh, social media, and 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 everything. Like you've talked about everything, comedians, you know, things like that. Yep. Um, I definitely need to check out the drinking partners ones because those guys are always Make amazing. Sense. Amazing. Well, guys. we did a pod for pod on that one, so. Oh yeah, I think mine, I remember when I remember the advertising around. Yeah, that. mine yeah. was the first episode, so they hadn't really started drinking yet. And then I left. <laughs> they did another interview where they drank, and then we came back. And so the difference between their show when we were <laughs> messed up versus sober was oh, I love I love the pod for pod of the concept. That's how I got into Alicia Tyler's uh, uh, podcast when she was like on Kevin Smith. Yep. So I had to follow the thread. And I'm just like, oh wait, she's good too. But yeah, yeah. I, lo I love that concept. It's a great crossover idea for sure. So go check it out, Chilla John Chichilla on the. No, chill on the Twitters. Chill on the Twitters. That's John who you chill are. Chill on the Facebooks. Yes. Chillatech.net. All chilla all the time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I'm just going to ramble. And Katie Dudas. The Dudders. Kay Hi. Dudders on the Twitter. She's on the Scarehouse podcast. I do stuff. And other things. Some spooky varieties. Go hang out. Go go run into her at the Scarehouse, too. Yeah, I'm there all the time. <laughs> yeah, basically <laughs> go out there check it out uh just got just got through the basement yeah, i went to the how basement was, how was i that? finally got a basement buddy to go with me because yeah. i was i feel weird going alone to the haunted houses um uh but no it was really awesome it is um uncomfortable it is more interactive you're having conversations with uh crazy people um and it's 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 a lot of fun it's really a seriously a lot of fun you know i had somebody come i was like that wasn't scary I was like no but it was a good time you know and you know and, and go in you know, especially I think interactive theater and I brought somebody that had no idea what to expect with this. Um, I, I think of it as that interactive theater experience and be like, be ready to play, mm -hmm. be ready to have fun with the actors. Don't, you're not just going to sit back and, and see what happens. Like, like maybe when you're walking through a haunted house or something like that. Um, and I, and I won't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, you know, it is an insane asylum kind of concept and it, it's, then they do have a lot of fun with that. Um, there's touching, there's, I got wet at one point. <laughs> um, please don't go if you have a sh shellfish allergy. Do they, do they, oh, you can still go. You can still go. Like they you just, just kind of get a heads up, you know? Yeah. So, there's, okay. there's a, just a certain component. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was part know. of it. They, they were like, do you have a pacemaker? Do you have this? Do you have a shellfish allergy? And we're just like, what? Yep. You know what? What is happening? Do you have a squid back there? What is it? It's not. They don't have a squid back there. That's a, that's. I'll, I'll give you that spoiler. If you're afraid of squids, you're okay. Um, yep. You know it. Nice. <laughs> Just wing a squid at your face. That's how you get wet. 
<laughs> but it's great. And again, uh, the main scare house is, is, is cool too. Um, it's uh, don't do them in opposite order like we did. <laughs> That's, that kind of kind of messes with your expectations a little bit. Um, I know Fuzzy kept wanting to have uh, waiting for the rest of the dialogue for all the actors in the main scare house. <laughs> 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 it was just like, wait, where was the rest of? Oh, okay. Um, so so do them kind of in order of ex- ex- extreme uh, if you're going to do it that way. But uh, also, you know, I I got. I was, I'm always interested to see the new uh, uh, sections that you guys mm-hmm. do, but I loved all the additions to the old sections. Super um, cool. I think, I, what did I, t- I text you? How did Infernal become more creepy? Yes. Yes. And I said more demons. More demons. I've, add more demons. I've never had legit chills going through a haunted house yes. before. And oh, it was good. amazing since I had always been through that one. Like, what is this the second year of this one? Yes, Infernal's, yeah. Two yes. Years so... Mm-hmm. Um, so no, they're really good. Definitely highly recommended, uh, to go to it. Uh, the best haunted house in the area, if not broader than that. So, and again, look for fishing without bait next week, next Tuesday. Uh, there'll be a, a cool conversation with, uh, Jim on there about fear and scare house and a lot of things around that with Katie too. So, yes. Find um, out what's Katie's, what's Dutter's scared of. Was, yes, exactly. <laughs> what scares Dutter's? Um, also, hey, we have a great interview coming up this Thursday with uh, Joanna Lowe, who does a lot of spoken word and, and uh, theater here. Uh, really interesting. She calls a multimedia theater in the Pittsburgh area. She has a great uh, event called Unhinged through Pittsburgh Fringe right now. I just want to give a shout out. Go check that out. Again, another another twist on haunted like theater plus haunted houses. But the haunted house is in the theater. And it's a theatrical performance. And I think it has a little bit of interactivity to it. Really cool stuff. And we had a great conversation about some of the other things that they talked about too. Look for that on the awesome chat this week on the iTunes and everything like that. Uh, Awesomecast.com. Thank you for, thank you to everybody in the chat hanging out all night. Like my mom. Hi, mom. Uh, Hi. <laughs> Amanda, uh, as well as Brandon and uh, everybody else that popped in throughout the night. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.